Welcome everyone to today's webinar, The Automated Call Center, How AI and Digital Patient Engagement Can Reduce Call Volumes and Increase Patient Satisfaction. We will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions that you have throughout the webinar by typing them into the Q&A box that you see on your screen. We look forward to hearing your questions. Today's session is being recorded and will be available after the event. You may use the same link that you used to log into today's webinar to access the recording. At this time, I am pleased to turn the floor over to our presenter, Bree Buck. Hi, my name is Bree Buck and I'm the head of our access solutions here at Notable. My background is in electronic medical records. I used to implement Epic and then several years in consulting, working with health systems to solve for their digital front door, um, to help with patient access and engagement. And I'm really excited to be here with you today to talk about call center transformation. So let's start by talking about some of the learning goals for today. We're gonna hit on some best practices for call center efficiency. We're gonna make the case for why automation is a key component to those best practices. We're gonna hit on some root causes underpinning capacity constraints, as well as how to address them in your organization. And then what's, what uh, workflows are best suited for automation? And again, we'll kind of go through a framework where we look at why the call center must be reimagined. What are some of the issues that we're facing? Why automation is the answer and the solution for a lot of those problems? And then what are some best practices for transforming that call center? and a case study of how some of our notable partners were able to automate many calls per year um, by transforming the patient experience. Aside from this agenda, my goal is for you to leave here inspired and excited about the role that Call Center can play in reimagining patient access. So let's start by looking at why the Call Center must be reimagined. Before we dive deeply, I wanna make sure we're aligned on what a call center does and the key components it plays within the healthcare organization or healthcare system. When I distill it down, I see three main tasks that a call center is providing and three main buckets of work that are happening. First off, your call center is operating uh, similar to a switchboard where you're routing calls, you're routing patients to connect to the right person in your organization. Now, oftentimes this is, uh, you know, someone who takes my insurance, someone who can see me for what I need to be seen for, a dermatology consult or an OBGYN. Next, we have performing back office tasks, such as completing manual workflows that support the patient journey. This is any kind of work that's falling under your billing, um, your collections, your financial plans, and also all the work that tends to end up in work queues where you have patients or you have uh, staff that are sitting in the back, um, back office and either proactively reaching out to patients or to, uh, to payers to collect this information. Lastly, your call centers are actually supporting and oftentimes giving clinical care. And this is a pretty unique function for call centers that exist in the healthcare sphere. Oftentimes there are nurse triage lines, maybe disease management programs and marketing campaigns for health programs as well. So we've talked a little bit about what a call center is, those distinct elements. One thing I wanna hit on is that yes, oftentimes this exists in a physical location or a group, of, um, a group of people, but also it's often decentralized across the healthcare organization. Maybe you have some calls, um, some referrals being routed through a centralized source, but then some are being handled by the front desk as well. And we wanna address all of those in our conversation today. So let's talk about some common challenges we hear from our partners. I think none of these will come as a surprise to you and they haven't from my you know, five plus years of working in call centers. Oftentimes there's staffing challenges, massive turnover, uh, low attrition, and really having to retrain a lot of folks as they're coming in, which creates a knowledge gap um, and maybe a poor patient experience. Additionally, there's a growing patient expectation of digital um, we kind of call this the consumer mindset, right? I can go on Amazon, I can click in. Within three clicks, I have something delivered to my house tomorrow. 
And that expectation is following patients from other industries into healthcare, and they are demanding more for how they, they deal with their care. And lastly, we have an outcomes misalignment where healthcare systems are trying to meet business imperatives and business needs, but it's coming into conflict with the quality of, of patient engagement. So we're trying to solve for these issues. We're trying to solve for this digital imperative. And we're also trying to solve for the incredible burden that's being put on staff, many of whom are turning over regularly. All of this leads to an opportunity for impact. Call centers are the strategic partners to make this happen. In all the conversations about DFD, patient access centers, call centers, this is the legacy front door. And there's no way that digital can happen without the call center being the strategic partner. Call center modernization has an immense opportunity for impact because of the challenges in digital imperatives. And it allows for us to ask those transformational questions. How do we e increase access to care? How do we talk about patient keepage and leakage? Where we're increasing patient acquisition, we're getting them in the door, we're keeping patients satisfied, and we're proactively working through their care, and then we're retaining patients through their care journey. And then how are we increasing operational efficiency and reducing costs? Next, I want to talk a little bit why I believe, and we believe, that intelligent automation is the new approach to optimizing the call center. So let's first talk about what the call center looks like now. In general, we have a very reactive and undifferentiated patient experience. Requests from patients rely on inbound and outbound calls. In the words of one of our partners today, there's a lot of chasing patients, right? Um, this, this need comes through and then we're reacting to that need. And the experience is incredibly undifferentiated. We have these generic repetitive tasks, increasing patient frustration and increasing risk of churn. And when we reimagine what a call center or a patient service center should look like in the future, it is a proactive and differentiated experience. Patients can take their care into their own hands through self-service automated digital workflows. And these workflows are also eliminating the underlying need that agents, the elim, in, eliminating the underlying work that agents need to perform. And this experience is not just proactive, it's differentiated, right? Healthcare has the imperative where each person's case is unique. Each person's health is unique, and we need to design patient access centers that meet that need for differentiated care and differentiated access points. What does this look like? Personalized high-touch engagement across in-person and digital channels that improves patient acquisition and retention. So let's talk about when technology comes into play. And let's talk about the old way we used to solve this problem. Call centers typically look to introduce technology in a way that will increase agent or staff productivity. They say, I have these workflows that I'm doing with a patient. How do I do them faster? And we look to optimize instead of transform. And that optimization is, OK, you know, how do I get more, more bandwidth out of my staff? Why are we trying to take the same workflows and make them faster when we should be asking if we can eliminate them altogether? So we recommend looking at what is the reason for those calls upstream? And then can we remove that call in the first place by again, creating that proactive and differentiated experience? And the impact here is that instead of just taking the same workflows and trying to shove more of them in, we're actually redefining that relationship between patient and physician. And we're giving the patient back their ability to action their care while also driving better business outcomes and reducing staff burdens. So as we talk about technology coming in, why have technologies failed to drive this shift? And if we think about this from the framework we just discussed, trying to take the same technologies and make them faster, 
a lot of what we typically apply does not work, right? Let's talk about CRMs and IVR and chatbots. A CRM may be great for bringing patients in the door and collecting information about them, but it still requires an agent to action all these things in the EMR. And maybe an IVR is helpful for bringing digital into your patient experience, but have any of us enjoyed talking to an IVR? <laughs> it's the most frustrating experience. <laughs> and lastly, chatbots. Yes, you know, a chatbot is a way to bring digital and omnichannel engagement, but you can't just keep adding branches to the tree. And at some point, a staff is going to have to act on what a patient is telling that chatbot. So these technologies are helping, but they're still in the old paradigm. And I think about it as like when Henry Ford said, if I asked people what they wanted, they would want faster horses. We're trying to move away from faster workflows and instead redefining those workflows altogether. So what's a different technological approach that we could take to solving the problems that are facing our call centers? I wanna to talk to you about intelligent automation and why I see this as the primary driver of moving for the call centers into full patient service centers. And four key technologies are undergirding our ability to do this. The first is artificial intelligence, which I know we talk about a lot and it gets thrown around a lot as a concept, but at its core, it's combining novel technologies like natural language processing, optical character recognition, voice to text recognition, and machine vision to know when and how to perform different workflows. Next, we look at robotic process automation or digital bots, which are performing automated workflows by clicking into EHR fields, typing notes, or uploading documents, just like an agent. Lastly, we combine these with patient engagement that meets the patient where they are. It's flexible, it's adaptable um, to both digital and non-digital means. And lastly, because healthcare is so individualized and personalized, we need custom configurability that we can deploy that meets each patient where they're at. So if we're on the same page that we need to redefine the call center, and you're with me that intelligent automation could be the way to do this, let's talk about some best practices of how we actually go about this. We follow a three-step methodology. The first being define highest ROI workflows to automate. Then implement the supporting automation and technology to automate those workflows. And then three, measure impact and iterate on approach. The entire time we're keeping in mind the strategic KPIs that we are optimizing for. And by this, I mean, we begin the process looking to the end. What are we trying to solve for? And then how can we design automation that is going to push that forward? And how do we constantly iterate to make that happen and to meet our goals? So we've talked about defining highest ROI workflows. I wanna talk a bit about the exercises we do with our partners to identify those workflows that we can automate. The first is performing an analysis of current inbound and outbound call volumes, and then segmenting out different types of calls, different types of reasons for high volume calls. The next is looking at the total time spent on each type of call as a general proxy for potential ROI automation. And next, we assess what percentage of those current call volumes could be reasonably automated, and what that would look like with an agent and automation side by side. We also look at a few other factors. What is the complexity of the workflow? What is the patient impact? Is there a high cost to error if an agent makes mistakes? And then what is the difference in performance? All of these getting at, where should we start with your organization and how can we drive those KPIs that you are constantly, constantly looking to? I want to show this as an example of going through the process with one of our partners. 
and identifying these areas, both from looking at the call volumes, as well as looking at where staff are drowning in, you know, incredibly high work queue volumes, and then coming up with areas where, you know, registration, referrals, appointment reminders, and provider authorizations, where we can deploy automation in nuanced workflows to help take the burden off of staff. All right, so now we've talked about those best practices that we use, and I wanna hit on some common technology pitfalls that happen as we're starting to implement intelligent automation to address these issues. Now, the first when we look to introduce technology into the call center is it can be really tempting to begin to introduce different technologies to address specific issues. Maybe we bring in one application for registration and check-in, maybe another for messaging and another for scheduling. And it takes years to see that in doing it this way, we've actually created this incredibly complex web that is difficult for patients to navigate, doesn't help meet the business objectives, and creates time-consuming work for the staff on the back end. And it's difficult to see this, but oftentimes it will be five years before we are aware of the outputs from this method. Another example I wanna call out is how oftentimes the front-end solutions that we implement are actually creating more back-end work. So maybe we introduce a chatbot for scheduling where a patient can chat with an agent to book an appointment. However, this is actually creating manual back-end work where an agent must confirm scheduling availability in the EHR and contact patients to reschedule if they book the wrong provider because there's no intelligence guiding the patient to the right appointment. Maybe we introduce a digital registration where patients can complete digital forms prior to their visit, but it comes back to the staff in a digital PDF where they must still re-enter data into discrete fields in the EHR. Time-consuming and laborious process for the staff. Maybe we introduce appointment reminders to remind the patient of a visit they booked six months ago. However, any information from the patient comes back in a portal separate from the EHR that the staff must have up, as well as any internal tools. And so we're creating three, four, five different screens and portals that an agent is having to look at just to manage one person's appointment. We can do better. I'd like to talk to you a bit about intelligent automation and how this solves for some of the problems that are pervasive in our industry. At Notable, we again are combining RPA, fire integrations, and a layer of intelligent automation that sits on top of your systems of record. And then using components of this within a platform to create world-class solutions to help automate these workflows in the call center. If we go back to our framework of the key components that a call center is doing for a healthcare organization, we are looking to help patient intake and access. We're managing clinical care and we're managing important and laborious back office revenue cycle management. Notable combines these technologies in a way that automates each of these workflows so that not only does the patient have a proactive self-service experience, but the back-end work is also taken out. Just as the EMR was foundational to healthcare for the past 20 years, Automation will be for the next 10. So what does it look like to take a platform and apply it to your call center or your patient service center with Notable? Call out three key components today, although typically, as I mentioned, we'll go through an extensive solutioning process with our partners to identify those HARIS ROI workflows. Some examples that we've seen in the past are simplifying access with self-service scheduling, Automating every workflow and work queue so that staff are not spending hours and hours combing through various accounts and chasing up information. And reducing inbound and outbound call volume for scheduling, registration, and authorizations. We've talked about intelligent automation as solving a lot of these pervasive issues that continue to occur even when we layer technology on top 
of the call center. And I want to talk a little bit about the way we can eliminate these call center workflows with intelligent automation, not just continue to make them faster. Take the example of scheduling and triage, where we're able to collect symptoms and insurance cards via a digital experience. We're able to leverage AI to determine appropriate site of care based on clinical indication and insurance coverage. And we're able to surface one-click scheduling for patients or direct them to the ER, all without a staff member needing to touch this account. So what does this look like in practice for a health system? This looks like increasing access to both new and existing patients, capturing all inbound visitors via the website. It then looks like a dynamic triage to verify the patient is scheduling the correct visit, using key clinical questions to drive to the appropriate type of care. This includes, hey, this is a great visit where a patient could be seen via telehealth, or hey, this is a, pa a visit where we should definitely see this patient much sooner than the patient was planning to come in. This is also allowing a patient to select times, providers, or locations that work for them and be proactive in choosing that care. Beyond this, we know that insurance plays a large role in the type of provider that patients can see. So not only are we dynamically triaging on clinical information, we are also dynamically routing the patient correctly based on their insurance information as well collecting that pair information up front, running OCR on the cards, and then using digital assistance to pull that information back into the EHR, all seamlessly and all in an automated manner. And then completing the intake and pre-visit forms before the patient gets into the office. Now, what does this look like for staff? As you can see, not much. The, stat, the same work that is taking hours and hours of staff time right now you can see here being performed by a digital bot, all before the patient gets into the office. And as we mentioned, the most crucial part of automation in the call center is measuring the transformational impact and iterating constantly to ensure that patients' needs are being met and business outcomes are being driven. What does this lead to? It's optimized staffing for areas of the organization that are stretched thin. The world-class patient experience, which empowers every patient to be proactive and work through the ideal mix of digital and in-person channels. And it's alignment to business and clinical outcomes, reimagining these workflows powered by automation to increase efficiency, reduce costs, and improve patient outcomes. To finish out, I'd like to walk you through a case study of a partner I worked with at Notable to transform their patient access and call center with intelligent automation. To tell you a little bit about this partner, they were in the Southwest US with a little bit over a million encounters a year with the strategic goal of improving patient and staff experiences by driving touchless registration. They had a huge administrative burden with staff managing many manual processes. It patients dissatisfied with navigating the call center to manage their care. And they had industry-leading, but still low volumes of patients, established patients completing pre-registration via MyChart, and claims denials disproportionately driven by inaccurate registration data. When we worked with this organization, they had a deliberate focus on patient, provider, and staff experience and engagement. And they didn't just want to solve for the front end. They didn't just want a snazzy patient experience with a lot of back-end work. They wanted a holistic process that was going to address suboptimal workflows and areas that took a lot of manual work. And they wanted to create truly touchless processes that free up staff capacity. We worked with this organization to identify those highest ROI workflows and then look how we could deploy intelligent automation to meet their needs and improve their outcomes. The workflows we focus on were around appointment text message reminders, registration prompts, new patient registration, demographic verification, hair plan matching, RTE, consent forms, and payment collection. 
And as we took a look at these and we deployed those core technologies, we were able to achieve 78% touchless registration, 94% patient satisfaction consistently, and a 74% digital pre-visit completion. All of those numbers feed into a transformational ROI for the call center. Starting with call elimination, where automated outreach for digital registration and appointment reminders eliminated the need for call center agents to manage these processes. This created work queue reduction, where digital assistants were performing manual tasks in the EHR based on pre-configured rules. So human staff were freed up to do higher value work. And lastly, this, this led to some amazing reductions in denials. With AI power, with AI-powered payer plan matching and patient data collection outperforming staff and reducing downstream denials caused by errors and typos by 83%. Not only did automation help to eliminate the work, it also increased the integrity and fidelity of the data going into the system. I wanna thank you again for talking with me about the ways we can transform the call center together using intelligent automation. I know this is an area that faces many challenges and digital imperatives. There's also an opportunity here to lead digital transformation and the digital front door within the healthcare system. And I believe that call center staff are directly poised to be the strategic partners to make this happen. Some key takeaways from the session are that call center transformation requires organizations to pivot from the marginal improvement of, let's take the same workflow and make it faster, to actually reducing the number of calls agents need to manage and automating full workflows out. This bottom-up approach is revolutionary and can completely transform patient care and improve patient keepage in the system. A digital front door powered by intelligent automation can address the reason for most calls before they even happen, which frees up staff capacity for higher value tasks. And to prioritize which call center volumes to focus on automating, we should focus on those highest value, highest ROI workflows by assessing call volumes, average mean time to resolve, the impact on patient experience, and revenue impact. And lastly, there are many common pitfalls when we look to bring technology into these workflows. We should ensure that your technology approach does not create incremental downstream work for your staff or IT teams. Thank you again, and I'd love to take any questions. Thank you, Bree, so much for that fantastic presentation. We will now begin today's question and answer session. Please submit any questions you have by typing them into the Q&A box you see on your dashboard. We will try to get through as many questions as we have time for. Thanks so much, Gabby. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Sarah Rosen from Notable, and I'm here with Bree, and I'm going to be facilitating your Q&A today. Lots of great questions coming into the chat. I know that um, this is a hot topic, devil's in the details, so we'll try to get through um, as many questions as possible. If we don't get through your questions today, we will follow up with you offline and make sure that we're addressing it later. Um, so lots of questions, Bree, kind of on the same theme. Um, let's start with integration. How, can you speak to that and how it relates to our work with call centers? Sure, Sarah. Thank you so much. So we've had a couple questions about integrations, and this is always a hot topic with our, uh, with our partners that we work with. The answer is that uh, we, we deploy different methods based on uh, which EHR we're working with and uh, you know, kind of what stage of automation we're at. Our typical philosophy is that we'll start with RPA as a form of integration because it's really nimble. We can get in, and again, kind of hitting on that third element of iterating and speed to value. With RPA, as long as we have access to the system, we can get in, we can begin to automate those workflows, and then transition a lot of this work to APIs. And we use APIs heavily uh, you know, when we're talking about automating areas around scheduling, 
uh, especially self-scheduling with patients, you need APIs uh, just due to the lag or latency with RPA. So those are our two kind of main toolbox tools in our toolbox, and we will deploy them um, kind of with different partners and for for different workflows. Um, when it gets down to it, again, APIs are, are really useful, but have some limitations that we have to work around in, in terms of what um, what endpoints are exposed. And RPA, again, you know, really fantastic for getting in um, and iterating speed to value, but does have some latency issues when we look at things like scheduling. Great. Thanks, Bree. I'm going to keep on going. We've got a question about Specialty scheduling, essentially, for scheduling, can this account for getting the patient to the right specialist or subspecialist, or is this more focused on primary care? Yeah, it's a great question. Now, I, I know this is a, a key issue, right, because anytime you start talking about complex specialty scheduling, uh, you have to deal with a lot of nuance uh, and really understand the clinical specifics of routing the patient to the correct uh, visit type, the correct specialist. Uh, oftentimes, you know, if we're, we're talking about an epic EMR, you have to deal with blocks and slots and uh, session limits and all those, <laughs> those kind of fun pieces. But in general, uh, we deploy a few different methods to handle the complexity of these areas. Uh, and, and oftentimes, um, it, it works because we can use that automation layer to uh, be a bit more nimble in, in handling that complexity. So we have something in, internally that we call clinical ICIs, or intelligent clinical intakes, which ask um, essentially dynamic questions to the patient about their care. And based off of some of that, uh, those questions, we can route the patient to, based on diagnosis and specialty and indication, uh, the correct visit type and the correct provider on the back end. We also do a little bit of that routing off of insurance card and insurance verifications as well. And all of that goes into um, you know, the AI and uh, kind of machine learning components in the back end to um, find the right visit and the right provider and right specialty. Now, obviously, that's uh, there's kind of a lot more we can get into with uh, particulars of specific specialties and subspecialties, but that's the general overview of how we approach it. Um, and then the tools we have in our end that we can um, can use to route the right patient to the right visit. Another question came in, and uh, I think it's a fantastic question because it's about, you know, what, what are patients actually saying? What is their experience like? So the question is, what is some of the feedback you've been provided from your big clients like MUSC and Intermountain? What are their patients saying? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, I, I know we, we talk a lot about outcomes, but we can lose some of the impact uh, in the numbers because, again, once we get deployed at scale, you kind of start, you know, what does it actually mean to have 97% patient satisfaction? Um, and, and I think, you know, we do find, uh, again, our, our patient satisfaction and our conversion, which is what we call, you know, patients actually using the notable powered experience um, to, to complete these workflows. Um, but what does that actually break down into? We have uh, really high patient satisfaction and conversion. But on top of that, we also get comments from every patient that fills out these experiences. And we have kind of work groups internally that are obsessively analyzing these outcomes. And I will say overwhelmingly, you know, we get a lot of really positive feedback on ease of use, um, simple UI. And I know, you know, Sarah, one, one thing that we hear a lot is, you know, automation digital is great, but uh, what about, you know, populations over 65, or what about um, populations that are, you know, handicapped or um, blind, or maybe maybe don't have access to technology in the same way? And we actually have found um, great success with those populations. Uh, we received patient feedback from from you know a blind patient saying, I, I was able to complete Notable uh, using the screen reader, and it worked for me. Um, similarly, we've we've had patients who you know, are, are able to complete the experience um, who might not typically be able to use the technology in, in the ways that um, it's available to them. So I would say overall, we get really, really positive patient feedback from this. And, and again, those outcomes are, I think, demonstrated in the presentation, but we often lose what does that mean for individual people, and, um, and we get really good feedback there as well. Yeah, and Bria, I would just add to that also, 
that while the patient experience is best in class, uh, we don't we don't have a best in class patient experience at the expense of staff experience. So we really try to uh, focus on patient, staff, and providers equally, and bring all of them that sort of consumer grade experience. Okay, next question for you, Bree. Um, does Notable have a sweet spot with respect to to size? Is this designed only for health systems, or can it be tailored to busy clinics or medical groups? Yeah, it's a it's a great question, and we actually are deployed, um, as Sarah mentioned, both at scale. Um, you know, with clients like Intermountain, it's 1,200 providers, and then you know we we have a lot of work with. Um, with smaller community hospitals and uh, rural populations as well. So uh, Notable is scalable to those different um, you know, patient populations and uh, customizable down to, down to the department level as well. But it's, it's a great question. Great. Another hot topic came in. Can you speak a little bit about how we address social determinants of health in our work? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things we didn't touch on as much in this presentation is our, our kind of pre-visit planning module, which is uh, collecting a lot of that um, information that maybe an MA would collect within, um, within their workflows in the clinic. And a huge part of this is collecting social determinants of health information. So uh, with several of our partners deployed at scale, we have social determinants of health questionnaires, um, family history, uh, you, you know, all, all those different pieces. And that information actually, uh, we have out of the box um, workflows for that and questionnaires for that. We also have some that we have developed kind of custom with our partners that capture information that they are specifically really interested in. Uh, I know, uh, you know, one kind of tangentially related is collecting gender identity uh, has been a big issue for um, for some clinics where you know some sensitive topics around either um, yeah the, the, that was one example and then another was uh, the phq9 or phq2 and the gad7 um, being able to collect all of that information uh, self-serve from a patient prior to coming into the clinic uh, has been really helpful with our workflows uh, and is a big part of what we have deployed and also custom uh, available to, uh, to make custom for our partners as well. Anything you'd add there, Sarah? No, I, th I, think, you, I think you covered that well. Bree, there are several questions and they're all worded a little bit differently, but I think all centering on one theme, which is essentially how do you manage staff pushback, staff concerns about a more automated call center? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. And I, I think to us, a lot of this problem boils down to intelligent automation or automated workflows are not coming about to displace staff, but are instead coming about to up-level staff to do things that only humans can do. I remember from sitting in a lot of call centers, right, you, there are certain cases that are kind of within their complexity or um, require that human element. And you want your staff to be available to do those tasks. Uh, another issue is a lot of times, you know, we're facing a staff shortage across healthcare. So being able to take each staff member and make them, you know, able to, to do 10 times more um, is, is really important. And I wonder, Sarah, is there anything else you would add there just kind of about how we think about introducing intelligent automation? Yeah, I think, Bree, you really hit on a, on a central point that our, our objective is to ensure that everybody is working top of license. And the reality is most call centers are very short staffed. We're experiencing an unprecedented labor shortage across the industry. So even if we could get the bodies to fill our, our, our vacancies, you know, we're, we're struggling to do so. And secondly, would that really be right answer? And the thought is there's no shortage of work to do. And can we redeploy people to do more sophisticated things, to actually engage in analysis, to get to even a more predictive state? So that, that's really the, the underlying philosophy. We want humans to do what they do best, what they can only do. And there's so much work that is repetitive, manual, 
and, and frankly, error prone. And so the, the principle behind intelligent automation and the way we approach it at Notable is to tackle all of that. Yep. And I think just to piggyback off that as well, we're trying to make work less painful for staff too. And I, I know in my kind of times shadowing these call centers, um, sitting in them, working with, with staff, oftentimes you've got five different screens up with three different modules and multiple applications just to get through one workflow. And so in some ways we're trying to address that too because you're creating moments of distress for both um, the patient and the staff member. And you're taking something that, you know, if we introduce intelligent automation could take, you know, a shorter amount of time, go quicker, or even the patient could do themselves instead of being kind of bound to a window of, of when staff are available for calls. But I think a lot of the problem we are trying to address is, you know, multiple technological applications, not talking to each other, not working together, um, and, and how do we improve that experience for the staff while also improving it for the patient. Well said, Bree. Um, we have a couple of Epic-related questions. So number one, do we only integrate with Epic? So who, who else can we integrate with? And, and two, um, is, do, you, do you mean to replace my chart or work alongside it? Yep, absolutely great question. So I'll take the first one. Um, the, the short answer is no, we do not only integrate with Epic. We, we work across EHRs and our kind of core paradigm is we want to work within your system of record, uh, wh whatever that is. Um, because of this, we found a lot of success with partners that have, you know, either through a merger or um, through the way their systems have grown, have multiple systems, we can work across that as well. If you have, you know, Cerner Clinical's Epic Web Cycle or um, kind of whatever mix that is. So we have deployed uh, with partners across EHRs and Epic, Cerner, eClinical Works, uh, NextGen, Allscripts, uh, Athena. So that is kind of core to our platform too, is being EHR agnostic. In terms of my chart, I, I think I, I come from the Epic world, as I mentioned, and because of this, I, I have a great appreciation for, for that work and you know, have spent a lot of time actually optimizing my chart. I think with our partners who are using it, we do not, we want to recognize that work and recognize if that is working for, for your um, organization and for those patient populations, that is great. Um, I think our main aim here is looking at where are patients still being routed through a call center or still needing to, you know, have a manual touch with staff. Typically, in this conversation, we're talking about calls. Oftentimes, that's work cues too, right? The, the work cues that exist in Epic are um, a massive, massive work cues. And so we're, a lot of times we're trying to target the work that ends up there as opposed to things that patients are already doing through kind of a self-service module. So we are, um, that's a little bit more of our, our approach there. Great. Well, I, I know that um, we've got just a, a couple more minutes left and we're going to let everybody have a little extra time in their day to get to their next meeting. So I'll take a, a couple of more questions. And as I mentioned, if we were not able to get to your question today, we will be sure to follow up with you. This is a little bit of a composite of a couple of questions that have come in, um, which is really about the outcomes that we drive. Um, so, Brie, can you speak a little bit more to what our customers tend to see, you know, you mentioned in the presentation as you walked through the case study, the, the, the decrease in outbound calls, you know, what are we seeing in terms of appointment retention growth, uh, other things that are driving the most value for our customers? Yeah, it's a great question. I think we kind of obsessively focus on, on how are we um, reducing call volumes and also reducing staff time. And, and those are kind of core metrics we look at, but it is a really holistic approach when we start to go through our, you know, deployment methodology, our analysis of what are those highest ROI workflows that we can um, look to automate. I think another one is kind of what is available for patient self-service and then how are we um, closing things like care gaps? So if we have a patient in our system, 
we know they're missing, uh, you know, a flu vaccine or a pneumonia vaccine, how are we actually reaching out to the patient proactively to make sure those are getting scheduled and kind of keeping patients within our system, but also, you know, being more proactive in their care as well as allowing them to be more proactive in our care uh, or in their, yeah, within their own care. Anything you would add there, Sarah, for, for those pieces? No, I think that's great, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to sneak in one more question before um, we let everybody go, um, which is around investments that have already been made. So, you know, a lot of folks have already invested in a CRM, potentially IVR. How can automation work alongside these technologies? Yep, it's a good question, and it's one because I know those technologies are, you know oftentimes top of mind for the organizations we're working with or something they're actively working towards that has been going on you know, prior to us engaging or having conversations with them. I would say you know, absolutely we can work alongside those technologies and I really see them approaching the same kind of core question um, but differently, right? So, so we have those, those technologies which are basically layering on top of our current workflows. We have um, ways of tracking patients, engaging patients, and then we are really looking at from a bottom-up approach, which of those workflows can we target and can we either automate out or, you know, give self-service options to patients. Uh, as far as integrations, we, we are able to integrate with any of those technologies like a CRM and um, if and when that is kind of best for, for our partners. Thank you, well, so much. Thank, thank you so much. Gabby, do you want to take us home? Yes, definitely. And thank you both again. Um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Bree, do you have any final closing thoughts you'd like to share with us? Thanks, Gabby. I think, you know, appreciate everyone sticking, sticking with us on a, on a Thursday afternoon. I think the key is we are we are energized and excited about the place of the call center, call center staff in terms of ushering in you know automation and self service workflows for patients, better patient experience, but also better staff experience. And we think that you know the folks on the phone are the the right partners to do this. And um, so that's really my perspective. Um, and we look forward to kind of you know bringing this thought into the industry and, and really pushing forward to, to increase intelligent automation in the way we're looking to solve these problems. Well, again, I want to thank you, Bree, for your excellent presentation and Notable Health for sponsoring today's webinar. Um, and to our audience members, please enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to having you join us for future webinars.